Morning guys, you join me here at the Nürburgring in Germany with Mr. Misha. Hi guys. Uh, as you might have noticed, my car is clean. I know a lot of you have a go at me about my car being dirty, but I use it like a proper car. I don't park it on Sloan Street. Misha, what are we up to today? <laughs> yep. So we're going to take you on a nice little road tour. Fantastic. To show you around the beautiful ins and outs. Yep. While we're doing, we're being assisted by our Apex Media team. Apex yep. Media, but maybe you can show Tom for the amazing <laughs> yeah. camera. Yeah, and Mr. Bruno. Tom and Mr. Bruno, <laughs> media team, media team in the house. <laughs> yeah, you, you couldn't tell that they're from Apex, could you? No, no. Sure not. Hey. no they're going to follow us in the Apex Polo. Yep. Uh, that's, uh, so we're going to have some rolling shots uh, of your car now that it's clean and washed. Yep. And to finish the day off, for people who want to see some more car content, except from this car, we're going to show you the Apex Taxi in progress. The most badass, even, even I may say so, the most badass, most exciting taxi in the world because it's a four-seater F80 M3 with full cage, four bucket seats and a lot more, but this is something for the end of the video. So yeah. let's hop in. Really and looking go. forward to that. All right, yeah, let's jump in. We are actually going further away from the Nürburgring right now because we were at the car wash which was already far away from the Nürburgring that's how it works with car washes here but then we realized where can we go can we do some uh, cliche brunch and shoot cliche Nürburgring sign shoot no we're going to take you to one of the hidden gems and it's actually a mini um, mini uh, what's the Alp pass called uh, the Selvio. Stelvio. Stelvio. Yeah, yeah. Mini Stelvio pass. yeah, we've both been there together, mate. Yeah, we've yeah. been. Yeah. Well, not to the complete top because it was closed, like That's the right. Nova is for the same reasons. Yep. But you can see already here as we're driving, it brilliant. is it is pretty awesome and brilliant. And if it the, if it would have been if it would have been my car, yep. I would drive a bit a bit harder. Yeah, I'm not, don't want to <laughs> do any like confessions on camera. But. <laughs> No, but like you said earlier on, there's a time and a place for, for going, like for, for having a, a spirited drive. Yeah. And I think, um, especially this time of year when there's no one around you, you know, providing you or not putting other people in danger, especially, yeah. I think it's always a good idea. Absolutely. But touching upon what we're talking about, what we're doing now, um, I've actually talked about that in many of my videos when I come down to visit you and stuff is the Nürburgring itself is amazing. Obviously, the Nordschleife is, is what most people come for, but it's these surrounding roads that are, some of them as good if not better um, and obviously being British sometimes you don't have the complication of you know you're actually insured out here and yeah um, and it's just amazing and, and and being with someone like you or uh, people that work at Apex that know the roads and can take you on these incredible uh, trips it's yeah just... because basically the Nürburgring's foundation is again being a public road so it's based on the same more or less idea of having public road because the reason why the Nürburgring was built it has three main reasons first of all it was built in interbellum so between the two world wars world war one and two and after the first world war germany had to sign a treaty or the pact that well we take all the blame and we're going to pay until 2014. yeah um so germany was poor in general and some regions were even poorer than poor and the eiffel region was the poorest region of germany so they needed to put the economy up somehow yep. and one of them was like yeah increase the tourism so they, they need to have something second thing a fun story back in 1913 I believe or 14 I forgot the exact uh, date there was a race like international race in Germany taking place and the German Chancellor German King back at the time he was like oh yeah well we Ger Germans the strong nation gonna kick everybody's ass but some Italian guy in a Fiat won the race and then he asked his racing team like what the actual fact <laughs> and then <laughs> they said well your highness we don't have any racing circuits where we can practice or test our materials right. so germany needed an actual testing ground and they were, they were starting the construction of avus which is just like a massive circle but no actually bends and turns in it yeah so that's what they were doing and finally they needed an actual racetrack because back at the time when the car industry was starting to become popular you know back in the beginning of 1900s yeah um and the racing industry started becoming popular uh they were racing the so-called eiffel run and eiffel racing but just on public roads and every single race um someone would kill a cow or crash into a farmhouse or into something because there was no dedicated race uh, racetrack. Yeah. So they needed a dedicated racetrack. And eventually to, of course, to benefit the car industry in form of, well, yeah, testing the cars. So there were many, many reasons and that's why it is here. But again, the foundation, the actual idea of the Nürburgring is to have something similar to actual public road. Yeah. So you can simulate, well, yeah, the, the public road environment. And now you can see 
just, absolutely stunning. Yeah, it yeah. makes me even speechless now that I'm here. Yeah, well, especially with the snow. Oh wow, look at this for a section of road. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that a tower down there just for John, uh, Tom Stamp to get in? Yeah, we, we could actually <laughs> do that probably, yeah. but it's actually a tower for hunters to hunt deer yeah. because actually I know less people. It's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. Tom <laughs> Stamp says, yeah. yeah, and there's a tower for you, Tom. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're putting you in that tower, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was saying I know less people who have not hit a deer on a public road than than did. So that's it's like very common thing here. When you hit a deer, uh, you should say that the deer was not hurt if it runs off. If it was hurt, you need to pay additional money to a hunter to kill it off. Wow. So you either kill it completely, and if you're not, then you should say, well, I think it was fine. I just hit it and dented it slightly. <laughs> dented uh, it. Yeah, well, dented my car, <laughs> not the deer. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just the thing, what, what's going to happen. So basically, he totally smashed it with the rented G-Wagon. Yeah. Um, and then the hunter came and he's like, okay, well, what are you going to do with the deer? And my friend was like, what do you think? I'm going to take it to the, as a hand luggage with me back to, to my country or what? <laughs> it's like, uh, so can I take it? Yeah, be my guest. So basically, <laughs> road kills are also a thing in uh, in Germany I, nowadays. I can imagine. Well, especially around here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's make some sh shots. Yeah, perfect. Cool. God, that's a wild animal. Oh, it's you, Misha. Sorry, mate. Wow. <laughs> oh, Bruno is uh, he's going full Doing bits. gutter photographer. Usually you'll find him laying on the floor getting that low angle. It's oh, like his speciality. I love low angles. Oh, right. Oh, sorry for pictures. Right here. Yeah, you bought it. Do you have any kind of blanket that I can put myself in? Ah, there we go. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, I yeah. Are you serious? Oh, mate. I knew. Like, I was like, I'm going to the Nürburgring. Bruno's going to want to lie in the snow somewhere. So let's bring an old nylon thing that I nicked from BT oh, when I worked with him years ago. I was just saying, it's his speciality to get on the floor. There you go. Right, time to do some rolling shot magic. Yeah, we've just uh, we've just done some stationary stuff, or what's it called, panning stuff. Panning, yeah, driving bys. Driving bys, bys, which I'll lay over some of now, because I can just imagine they're going to be awesome. Um, but now we're doing some, some uh, driving shots. Mr. Tom Stamp hanging out the back of the Polo, but he has his seatbelt on, um, <laughs> and he's yeah, he's not hanging out the boot. Yeah, you'll see his little head and camera pop out in a minute. Picture lens out. Oh yeah, so we got to look serious. Misha, talk yeah. us through a section of the Nurburgring. A section of the Okay, yeah. let's start at the beginning. Aim I'll get a bit bit. nervous because okay. that's what I'm like it's when okay, I'm in okay. the... It's okay, um, <laughs> you, you cannot impress anyone. You can make everybody laugh, so just be calm. Yep. Aim for the middle of the bridge. Now yep. start steering towards the left curbstone and yep. now move over to the right side. Aim for the Yokohama sign or the orange barrier, whatever you see first. Yep. And in the bottom, complete compression, start steering towards the left curb and aim for the right curb. Moving over to the middle side, back to the right side on the brakes and over the white line and on the brakes and start steering right to the right curb stone and tight left and at the blue side on the left start steering right tight to the barrier moving over to the left side and back to the right at the orange barrier you'll see it in a bit you go on the brakes brake 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 till the traffic light and start steering to the left and moving over to the right side and now aim for the left side and to the center and ah, i think we're done brilliant <laughs> mate that's um i have to say first i'm going to put the link to that particular video that I shot with Misha was it oh it's actually not last summer the one before because uh, uh, I was in my white manual M135 uh, yeah, M1, yeah. Uh, a really good video and Misha is an amazing instructor and a lot of people that watch that video were like how the hell do you listen to those instructions when you're going so <laughs> like but when I watch it back I think the same I'm like how do I but what when you're there in the moment and you're doing everything you're so focused on the road ahead and you're f all you're listening to is everything that Misha's saying. Like if he said jump off a cliff at that point, I'll jump <laughs> off a cliff because you're that tuned in, you know? Um, but it's an amazing, It's I, I said it in that video and I'll say it a million times more that if you're coming over, whether you're a professional race driver um, or an absolute amateur, just get some instruction laps um, by Misha because it just makes everything so much easier. And whether you've done a thousand laps on Gran Turismo, which I had, yes, it's good in the sense that you learn, you know it's gonna be a left or a right coming up. But you don't know the camber or some bumps and bankings and- Exactly, yeah, and you're constantly keeping an eye in the mirrors, 
which I am as well, but there's things approach you so fast out there and yep. Misha's seen it usually way before you have. Um, and it's just, honestly, it just, it, 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 it really chills you out and you don't want to be out, the last thing you want to do on a ring is go out there as a nervous wreck because nervous wreck, stiff arms, you're gonna crash. Like It's not good to go out there with someone like Misha, at least for a couple of instruction laps. It chills you out, it makes you understand things. You're never gonna learn the circuit in a couple of laps, but you're just gonna understand the way things work. And um, yeah, highly recommend it. And uh, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, every time I come out now, I need to have a, a Misha lap or two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I always uh, enjoy those. Yeah, no, they're great, really good. So where are we off to now, Misha? Uh, we're going to Brunchen, or no, actually Nürburgring sign for some cliche Nürburgring sign shots. Ah, uh, yep. Um, yeah, then to Brunchen for some cliche Brunchen shots, but I've, yeah, although it's cliche, it's a signature. It's like having a shot of a carousel, you know, of your car in the carousel. That's something that you need to have. And uh, It's yeah. cliche for you guys, but maybe not so much for me. Yeah, absolutely. In that sense, yeah. I mean, yeah, but the... Yeah, I mean, no, all I want to say is as well, there are a lot of other interesting spots around the track and on the track that people don't know about how beautiful they are. For example, the road that we just took, that's like people wouldn't know about its existence because people focus only on those things. Yeah. But when you're like, or never can regular, there are a lot of people from UK who come here like five, six times a year. Yeah. And at some point it becomes more or less boring, like to go all over this same routine all over again. Yep. And then it's nice to know that there are people who can point you out that there's more than just those regular spots. Sure. And just tell me quickly about the these driving tours. So you can either I've seen online obviously with your vlogs that you can you can obviously rent your some of your cars for, yes. for these trips, but you can turn up like I have in my own car. Yeah. And uh, like again like like you do on the ring. And, yeah. and then you could have uh, what someone like you in the car mm -hmm. with you or. Yeah. So uh, how it basically works is uh, preferably for us it's, it's always easier if there's a big group of people coming. Sure. Uh, you can rent the car. It starts from 199 euros for for a Polo. So if you want yep. to like rent the car from us, like the one in like front. The one in front of not just a Polo, Polo GTI. GTI, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it makes a big difference, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we also can, you can do it also in the M2. Yep. And you can also come with your own car, and your own car tour costs like 149 euros. Wow. So okay. basically, with the car, you, you basically pay more for our, for our time because we're away for uh, three or four hours with you. Of course. And showing around. So yeah. it's like, Not yeah. 15 minutes for a lap, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, or 149 is one hour of instruction time on the track. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna take you around, show you all ins and outs, show you something that only locals know about, the secret places the, uh, around the track, show you the track, uh, also show the uh, where all the prototypes are being manufactured, where the manufacturer's secret factories are. Yeah. Um, a lot of things, a lot of history, a lot of trivia, things that people may have seen on YouTube, yep. but want to know where that particular spot is. Where Sabine Schmitz is. Exactly, where, 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 yeah, where Sabine is, and uh, a lot, yeah, lots of things that we cannot tell you now because it's not going to be like what 20 minute video, but we're out for you for four hours almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, small lunch as well, yeah. and um, yeah, that's basically what people can do. So, any type of car, we also have a Porsche 911 Mark II uh, GT3 RS 991, yep, uh, that people can experience being on a passenger. So we would rev a bit higher, yes. drive a bit faster. So that one is uh, 4.99 for four hours. Wow. And um, oh, you can, oh, that's for the road, is it? That's for the road. Oh, so for, wow. for uh, if people want to be on, on a passenger seat and just like okay. experience a supercar on the road. Yeah. Um, well, we, yeah, in my opinion, one of the best cars ever. One of the best, the, sound, the, the best yeah. sounding car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so there are a lot of possibilities. Just shoot us an email and uh, whether you want to take your own car and uh, yeah, find out some nice nice spots to drive around and uh, yep. or you want to take one of our cars, go for it. Perfect. Oh, that's good. It's a great alternative because uh, like you said, it's great the ring, but it's a nice uh, nice change and nice mix up, you know, of things. Yeah, and speaking of uh, the shots that we're doing, the, the photo package is roughly about uh, Price-wise is 199 euros. Yep. Um, and what you get in return is all the pictures that you see. So we do the static shots, we do rolling shots, and panning shots. Yep. And again, we are 
gone with you for almost an hour or even more and there's a lot of post-production involved of course I can so imagine. you get like uh, edited uh, pictures so if you compare all the time that we put into it yep. you get a lot in return Tom's pictures have been shared by uh, Porsche officially yep. Yep. on their Instagram page and uh, also Bruno's and Tom's pictures have been shared in multiple UK magazines BMW magazine was a picture of the month and some Ford magazine so they do quite they know it, what they're doing yeah, they know what they're doing yeah brilliant cool right uh, next stop yeah photo let's uh, we'll join you at the Nobag ring yeah, sign. <laughs> yeah. Right then, guys, hopefully, you uh, like the pictures that we got outside the famous Nurburg ring um, building. We're just heading to the petrol station now for a quick bite to eat. Ah, oh, lovely F12. But more importantly, is here is a new Jag of some description. It's fully loaded up, so it has like water tanks in the back that obviously replicate passengers and then we've got how much did we say this is 1600 kilos as you can see it's really weighed down so they're basically putting it through a lot of abuse to make sure that it lasts so yeah there's a bit of petrol station porn there's a bit of human porn well sort of human porn not quite the same porn that we saw in the last petrol station oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, nice. uh, Misha's still trying to recover from that. That's nice. Are we allowed to film in here? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hello. 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 And look, if you ever want oh, one of these Nobag Ring stickers, you know where to come. There's one or two there. Food. So we're here now at uh, Brunchen, which is a very famous, uh, it's also known as the, the YouTube corner. As the YouTube corner. So um, I've parked my car up there because I thought it would be rude not to and also we wanted some nice snow so these legends can take some really cool pictures. We've been taking photos for about a year of Apex here. Yeah. I've never seen anyone park up there before. See? It's just Because it's just... when there is no snow it's actually sand so it's impossible to get on there. Oh well there you go. So hopefully I'm the first and the last. I'm ready for a load of cars so I'm up in my Yeah. Uh, you've seen it here first guys. But yeah this so this is this is Brunchen, and uh, as you can see, this is where a lot of the, like, yeah, the YouTube corner. So you see a lot of skids and a few accidents and stuff here. Mm -hmm. But um, but you do get lots of spectators here, especially when something like VLN or the end. Fun fact, speaking of VLN, and especially the 24-hour race, because here are literally tens of thousands of people yep. when the race is happening, and they build their own grandstands and lots of barbecues and whatnot. And at night, when drivers are driving past, they complain of the smell of all the burnt meat. Yep. And they're like, we're hungry. <laughs> Another fun fact, there was a guy who had a very special custom-built GT3 race car. He had a carbon fiber holder on his door cart for his pack of cigarettes because he was a chain smoker and every time he would go on the main straight, he would have a minute. To You're smoke a kidding cigarette. me. No, I'm serious. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. I'm not going to say who that was, maybe before the people, uh, that person going to get disqualified or that team, but that yeah. story is like one of my most favorites. That is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, because we were just talking about the straight, which isn't too far from here. No. Um, what is it, about two kilometers on, on the circuit itself? From here, yeah, that's 16 kilometers. So, yeah, I would say uh, roughly uh, four kilometers away from four. Yeah. And the, and the straight itself itself is two, two kilometers yeah, long two kilometers. so enough time for a cigarette yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah what you probably again won't really see because cameras film flattens it out but the first thing you notice about the Nürburgring I did anyway when I did my first ever lap here years ago is just how much undulation there is and let me tell you I, I, I we couldn't walk up the track now as it is covered in snow because that is really steep. Like coming in there is really steep, and you just you do get that sensation in the car, but not as much as when you look at it. Hey, um, and there's some. What's a bit out of uh, Adenau, and then it goes up into the forest. Oh, Exmuller, Exmuller towards now the links. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, is yeah, that the, the steepest climb? Yeah, out? It's yeah. the steepest corner. Uh, I had actually you someone last year stalling their car. <laughs> Oh, you, you would not want to still go yeah, up there. First place. But it's like the most dangerous corner for rear-wheel drive cars in wet conditions because the Evercreen is being used daily by prototypes or just casual people like you and I who drive the track. And yeah. it's like the most rubber-coated surface, so to say. So on the dry days, it's perfect, especially when it's a hot day. It's almost like slick on slick. You have very good grip yep. or actually zero grip because the tires overheat. But when it's wet, Water on rubber, water on rubber. It's exactly the same we had yesterday on the safety driving center. It's absolutely slick. Yeah. It's just like as if we're driving on ice. 
we yes. need to head off to Team Shermer. Team Shermer. The uh, place of the most, uh, well, to, to start with, the fastest BMWs around the Nürburgring. Yep. And that being said, one of the most badasses uh, track tools BMWs in the world. It depends what your style is. If you're more into low and like wide body, then <laughs> it's maybe not your thing. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, love them. Right, cool. Right, let's head over there. Uh, we've got Tom in the back now. Yep. Um, yeah, Tom's photographing duties are almost over. I think he's going to get some nice shots of uh, of the M3 that we're going to look at. Thought I'd just run the cameras again just to show you how beautiful the roads are. Off memory, I think we go through this village for yep, the next yeah, 30 sure. seconds and then, and then it's some really nice roads out of there. And in fact, for those of you that watch all of my videos, you'll recognize some of the rest of the road as to where I did my M5, F90 M5 review. Um, really nice bit of road going around the lake, isn't it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. No, the lake is not here yet. Oh, is it not? It's coming later. Okay. We'll drive past it. It's just beautiful scenery. Especially when you're talking, makes it more interesting. <laughs> Describe what you see, Misha. I see a lot of trees. Say what you see, Misha. I see it. As we're approaching oh, the land of Oh wow. wow, look at that. Oh wow. That is stunning. Nothing coming. So we can use. Bit of the inside there. The inside there. Bit of the outside there. Oh, what a beautiful piece of road. We have the very awesome shot of the M4 that we're about to see here in this road. Remind me to send it to you because that was pretty awesome. There was just like with a random group of people who just like lit up. I think I don't know. They decided to get drunk and walk around. I think. And that was pretty interesting. Wow. Yeah, I think that was rock and ring weekend. Yeah. pedestrians yep. and never speed in towns and villages absolutely not even if they're quiet because when they're quiet even more so we turn left we turn left people are so used to it being quiet that kids just run out in the street because they they forget about the traffic and I would not want to run over anyone interesting building here on the right we're not gonna say who it belongs to. Uh, do we keep going straight? Yes, straight keep on. going straight. Okay, we're not gonna say who it belongs to. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a secret test center to me. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh, oh look at this. Nap up, so I've got an idea of any curves coming up. This is semi tight, you can, the speed is fine. Okay. The lake. Oh, you look at it, it's frozen. You have amazing drone shots here. Oh, no, don't tempt me with that. <laughs> Do you have your drone with you? Yeah, it's in the boot, fully charged. Mm. <laughs> Do you think I should send it off? We can do it on the way back if we have time. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. All 600 horsepower because of X Drive. You couldn't have done that in EF10. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a right and a left, isn't it? Yes. So, right. ah, so you're basically a local now. This one's like, and in first gear, you just come out of corners like this, put your foot on the floor, and it just goes, 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 goes. It doesn't do that. Okay, Chris Harris. <laughs> 
Pele and Harris, I've known as. Wow. I'm, well, I'm going to want to watch this video back just to relive this beautiful drive. Mm -hmm. I once followed Misha down here to a, um, to Sherman. He was in the M3 taxi that we're going to look at. And I was in Tim's crazy GT8 Aston. Um, that was great. I think I remember Misha saying all I could hear was the V8 at the Aston the whole way, which is no surprise. Uh, we go around the back here. Yeah, yeah it'll be easier. Right. Welcome to the home of the most track focused BMW in the world. How exciting. Should I put it in here? Yeah, yeah it'll be fine. Yes. Look at all those medals. That's where I keep all my uh, collection of medals for all my wins at the uh, Nürburgring. Yeah, yeah I don't Nürburgring TF, TF, TF Cup. Yeah, TF Cup, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess, well, that's something for another time. That's oh. just our E36 GTR that is being built. And there's a lot more stuff that uh, at some point we might be able to show to you guys. But this doesn't look impressive. But well, uh, like, when were you like, out in April, I believe, last year? Yeah, April uh, and the N24. No, I didn't go out in the N24, yeah. did I? Just April, yeah, yeah April okay. time. Basically, this is our F80 competition M3 taxi. And back when it was still in one piece, it was still far from being stock. It had different big brake kit, it had nitro suspension, Team Sherman kinematics, completely different geometry, aero mods, braking cooling, etc., etc., differential cooling, cooling. But that's all you can find in detail in the video we did last year. But what are we doing here now? But as you can see and imagine, putting a full road cage and four bucket seats, so I already spoiled what we're doing here takes quite some time. You cannot just do it in one and a half months. No. So that's why this is what we're doing for this year to keep things exciting as well. So last year we started with some heavily modified F83, but now we're taking it to the next level. Yep. So what are we doing here? You can have a closer look by now. Um, and uh, maybe by now you, you drop in, grab a camera and show what you find most exciting about this build because you yeah. as a real BMW guy. Well, first, firstly, I've never seen a, uh, a shell this empty before you know you've literally taken everything out uh, but I just find it fascinating because well first it looks so spacious in there because you've got none of the dashboard etc um, but yeah just the uh, what would you call that the bulkhead the, the firewall the firewall um, it's fascinating you can obviously see where the steering column goes to on a right-hand drive car and on a left-hand drive car it's taped up this is where all the transmission is uh, that's the transmission tunnel through the middle there hence why 3 Series are usually a bit less spacious than say an Audi that's usually just front wheel drive uh, or Audi A4 but um, but yeah I just find it I just find it amazing and look we can look underneath here obviously we know that standard M3 and M4s come with carbon roofs ah, that's an option um, on the M3 Oh, is it an option on them? M3 is an option. Oh, maybe not in the U in the UK. It's uh, I think it's standard, but okay. but it's a non-cost option for a sunroof, which um, obviously, yeah, uh, the purists wouldn't have. Yeah, just sorry for a random cut here, but Tom Schirmer just delivered us the fresh brewed coffee. Schirmer Engineering. Apparently, apparently it's the best. At the have Nürburgring. you seen the Futurama um, episode where uh, Fry is like getting hundred cups of coffee, and then like time suddenly freezes, and he's like superhuman. That's like no. basically what happens Cheers. when you drink one cup of Team Sherman coffee. Okay. That's oh, great. it really is good. It Yum. Is good yeah, it's strong. Nice. It's very strong. Right, back, to, back to the bad cup. Yeah, leaving coffee there <laughs> so it can cool down and I can use my hands to show what's happening. Yep. Oh, wait, before I forget, a lot of stock stuff we still have in our ba basement rotting away. So the big brake kit, the M666 wheels, the, the standard competition seats. I believe, Joe, you wanted those seats. Yeah, I've been looking at them, yeah. yeah <laughs> guys want it we have it still for sale and uh, let us know we, we, we can get rid of it yeah uh, in case someone is looking for some upgrades but what are we doing here going back again four bucket seats full roll cage so it's not going to be just bolt on cage with some crappy engineering no the whole chassis is being also at some points completely reinforced and uh, the reinforcement points being changed yep and the main question is how can you do it while maintaining street legality well, Team Shermer is quite a special shop, if I may say so, even special place, because they're not just a workshop, they are a car manufacturer. 
So in papers, it is being shown as a team share of a car, the same like you have with uh, Alpina and uh, Roof, Porsches, they have the same status. So when you open the documents, they can do crazy stuff because their stuff is approved by the German TÜV and a lot more. So that's why it's crazy. So four bucket seats, full blown cage, no insulation material, so it's going to be loud. And because of that, it's going to have full uh, four-way intercom system. So you can still hear each other and talk with each other. And the car will have also advanced video recording system. For, so when you go out for a lap, you'll have an amazing video yeah, of you in the passenger seat. And most importantly, that means that you can actually put your phone and stuff in your pocket and enjoy the lap because yeah. I've done it before when I first came out here. I spent the whole lap trying to record things. Yeah, it's footage is rubbish and you ruin your lap and you feel sick by the end of it because you're trying. So you can actually sit there by the end of it. It's like when you go on a cool fair ride mm -hmm. or a roller coaster and you get the pictures at the yeah. end. But and uh, uh, to be honest, uh, we, uh, we offer videos for people, but some, sometimes people say, no, I'm going to film with my phone. Unfortunately, it's not allowed because of the new regulations. It has to do something A with media license and B safety. If there is a collision, you're gonna have a phone in your face. Yep. And then, yeah, that's a bad thing. On the second thing, if someone else has a bad crash and you're like, oh, Instagram Live, look at that. Uh, yeah, that's why this cannot be. So if you want to have a video, uh, it doesn't matter if it's us or any other of four companies that offer ring taxi rides, you have to pay for a video. It has to do with regulations or you cannot do anything. Yep, else. yep. Um, yeah, but that's basically, I think, what it is. The Can we talk about some of the challenges? So, as we were talking about yes. uh, earlier on, obviously, front bucket seats, it's not, you know, it, you basically unbolt the front and mm -hmm. put the new ones in. And, and, you know, that's quite a common thing in cars these days, track cars and, st yeah. and stuff. But obviously, buckets, like full bucket seats, proper ones in the back, is not as easy as it sounds. Absolutely. So, we have here actually three challenges. Uh, when I said, okay, it's going to be the first car of its own kind with full row cage and bucket seats. A lot of people have uh, said, no, there are multiple cars. For example, Falcon, the uh, drift team of Europe has uh, like, uh, I believe some older M5. Chris Forsberg or some other drifter from, uh, from the United States have a drift car with four bucket seats. There are multiple safety cars from DTM from the past from AMG with four bucket seats. But they all have one thing in common. A, they're not street legal. So they just like, it's there and it's fine and there's no practicality. This is going to be a fully street legal and approved to be on the street. So that's first thing. It's going to be approved by the German law, which is probably like the, the, the strictest entity regarding road regulations in the world. So it comes with a lot of challenges. Point two, when you put bucket seats here, you have fuel tank. Mm. So this panel and well, a lot of things needs to be redesigned around it. And of course, there are some people who have asked like, oh, okay, why don't you put a fuel cell in the back? Well, that's something that cannot be done due to multiple reasons, again, regarding street legality. So that's one of the challenges as well. And for the rest, it still needs to be efficient. Uh, this means that, again, according to German uh, street rule, street legal yeah, road rule, uh, you, well, the cage cannot obstruct you too much. But in case of an accident, you can still get out with, without too much obstruction. So basically, if you have a bucket seat, and you know buckets like they are like towards here, so yep. Cage cannot be higher. You cannot have an extra obstruction over the seat. So that's why if the cage, the cross is going, it will be here, but like not too crazy. Sure. And again, you are still changing the geometry of the car because you're adding, uh, yeah, adding different construction. Although you would think, oh, okay, cage. Everyone can put cage because the car is rigid by itself, right? Uh, no, it has some extra challenges, um, especially because again, people need to fit in here and be comfortable for on the world's toughest racetrack for 20 kilometers. Yeah. It's not that something like, oh, okay, we're gonna go for like 30 second drift lap. No, you need to like seven or below seven minutes, who knows what's gonna happen eventually. Um, people need to be uh, having fun, have a time of their lifetime and be safe again. So yep. there are a lot of things involved in this. So uh, it is, and the most crazy aspect, and I've been joking about uh, a lot with, with Robert, well, I, I call him the worst businessman in the world, because he's spending additional tens of thousands of euros on this project, and it's going to be the same price that it was last year. Yep. So 269 euros for the whole ride, so you can split it three ways, and less than 90 euros, you have it. And then some people say, oh, I'm not going to pay like 90 euros for a lap. Well, if you're going to, I'd rather drive my own. Okay, you're going to drive your own. You have 30 euros for a lap ticket, yeah. so you have 60 euros left. But depending what kind of car, it's between 10 and 20 euros for fuel, yeah. so that's, you have only like 40 euros left. 
Yeah, then you have the car, the cost uh, of the car, depreciation, brake pads, yeah. tires, everything. And the, and the risk. And, uh, the and, risk. and the risk of any kind of accident. So this is the, the cheapest, the most, uh, I don't want to say cheap because it's, it's, it has a negative sound to it, the most affordable way to have the fastest lap on the Nurburgring, the yep. most exciting. You can share it with three of your friends and have an awesome video. So, yep. Yeah, and you also have the benefit, yeah, of a very. You either have someone like Misha, or now Tim, or Moran, or yes. Moritz, or yeah. I mean, everyone that, that that you guys employ as drivers are the best. And I've come over here, I've flown back to come and spend some time with these guys, and I love it. And in the summertime, you need to come out here and, and honestly experience experience that on top of anything, uh, in my opinion. Um, and and then if you, obviously if you want to take your own car out there, like I said, get an instructor because that's just, it's worth its own weight in Misha. Really, you see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. It's like one of your bad jokes, but yeah. worse. But yeah, another thing is obviously check out these guys, um, Team Shermans, I'll put their Instagram because they got some amazing pictures uh, on there, lots of their new project cars, which, I mean, you know, a lot of it's confidential through there, so we can't look at it, but this just, oh man, I mean, I was dribbling when we got here for about 10 minutes. I had to go in and still wipe my mouth a little bit, but um, there's some serious nice projects in there, so. Uh, keep an eye on there and to go for all that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it, mate. That's it. That's I hope it. you had a good uh, day. Oh, mate, it's been, a, it's been amazing. Awesome. Have a good trip back. I'm looking forward to see you. Yeah, thank, thanks so much, Misha. I'm looking forward to see you guys here at the ring as well. What's yeah. An awesome time. But honestly, come down, stay with these guys, visit them, whatever, whatever you want, they've got it. If you want to drive your own car or one of ours or be passenger or just like, I don't know, backstage VLN tour, everything regarding the cream, we can help you out. Yeah, they really can. Yeah. Thanks to Tom behind the camera. Um, and and uh, other Tom somewhere in this office. Another Tom the Sherman. Yeah, yeah, totally the most awesome yeah, Tom Sherman, Tom. <laughs> uh, Bruno as well. Um, and Tim and everyone. And Diana. Diana, Diana, yeah. And the shit that Diana says. I will see you at the next one. There will definitely be more of these with the Russian um, comes. And until then, you're more than welcome to check out my channel. Oh, yes, of course. Really? Yeah, I, did, I think I said that earlier, but yeah, really good vlogs. Funny. And lots of food. And coffee. Okay, now good coffee. Coffee, see you, see you coffee. <laughs>